Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the first game of our Grand Finals round of four here for the High School Star League. We do have Temple City on the blue side facing off against Hayes in High School on the red side. And alongside me on the desk tonight, as I was not brave enough to go it alone, is the illustrious Crusader Kitten. Hey Octavian, yep, excited to get into this first game of our winner's bracket finals. It's the BO3 coming up here, so should be a good one here. Temple City versus Hazen High School. Uh, Temple City, of course, some should remember from last year's grand finals that went down to Thomas S. Wooden 3-1 where they lost that one, so claimed second place there. Also claimed second in our recent winter championships where they faced off against Hazen and lost that 2-3 there, so... Hazen High School seemed to have the upper edge, but we'll see what happens. Temple City were the ones that um, came in here through the... Um... Oh, no, wait. Both of these teams won their mm -hmm. recent round of four matches. That's right. Loser of this is going to be going over to the loser's bracket to face off against University High School. But anyway, we are into the picks and bans already, and bans coming out. Anivia, Shen, and Trundle, as well as Rek'Sai, Victor, and Aurelia. And a lock-in already for Hazen of their duo lane, a uh, composition featuring quite a bit of arts, artsiness, I would guess. <laughs> um, Karma and Jin going to be spreading the beauty and perhaps the pain all over the place. I don't think Jinx would be the pick. I'd like to see a Renekton. I want to see some more lane-dominant top laners come into the meta nowadays, since uh, we've sort of been going back towards bruisers and tanks with the Aurelias and Shens, but Aurelia, Shen, Trundle, all of these are banned out right now, so I think we're going to see some of our spiciest off-meta picks up in the top lane, because a lot of the meta picks are out the window. Yep, and top lane is definitely you have to watch in this matchup. Captain Nuke always 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 just the main player here for temple city definitely lots of uh, focus around him here but lockins coming through looks like we have the bottom lane already here for temple city it's going to be the Jin and the karma being played by buttshot and sketch zed locks in the zigs for the mid lane yeah and uh we've seen zed on zigs before if memory serves the uh, last time I cast for the HSL, a few weeks ago during your um, spring playoffs, Zud pulled out the Ziggs a good few times right after the changes which made him more, even more of a uh, turret-pushing monstrosity. And it was very powerful in his hands. It pulled Hazen through a good few number of games. So I like the composition that Hazen has put together already. They're a little bit low in terms of in-fight mobility, but what they do have is... Um, damage in spades and they've got zone control to make up for that as well with a Gragas and a Ziggs. And look at this, they actually saved that top lane pick for last year so Captain Nuke gonna be running a bit of a flex, flex pick here. He does have quite a ranged champion pool but he does favor these uh, top lane carries and over on the side here <laughs> of Hazen hovering over a few of these top lane carries that uh, Captain Nuke may like to play. However, we do see Mal's hard locked in here for Sweet Genius and Jarvan it's locked in for Q1 up in the top lane. So we're going to be seeing what Captain Nuke decides to respond here, but what do you think about the uh, Hazen High School's team comp here? Well, um, it's interesting to see the Jarvan locked in. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the Jarvan in the top lane. We could see Q1 taking the Graves, and it could be a Jarvan jungle. There's still a little bit of flex space here for them, but a Jarvan top is something I wouldn't be too horribly surprised by. Um, it's certainly not... A staple but with three staple top laners banned out I'm surprised Gangplank wasn't actually picked Gangplank would be like the fourth option to go to he's up there in the first and second stringers but uh, Jarvan I think has a place burgeoning into the meta now ever since a good few patches ago the uh, buff to his ulti which made it so that it doesn't just do single target damage to whoever he cataclysms now it's an area of, of effect not only movement denial but also damage skill as it will hit anyone that's caught within the circle with that massive chunk and it looks like it will be Q1 taking that to the top side yeah and it looks like the combatant Captain Nuke gonna be picking up the Olaf here so that's actually a pretty interesting to pick to come in here as he said no gangplank coming in but maybe that matchup just isn't favorable against the Jarvan here that's true I'm I'm really surprised at the amount of top lane focus that we saw in the bands in particular that gangplank didn't get picked by either of these teams but you know I'm I'm pleasantly surprised I'm not unhappy to see new innovative top laners things like this Olaf things like this Jarvan this is a matchup that I really can't say which way it's gonna go and I'm really curious to see how it will 
Yeah, I mean, the game playing is just a monster to see. Smeb was playing it lot yesterday in the LCK. It's just disgusting. So, both of these teams here, Hazen High School, they have quite the pick amount of pickoff potential here. We're seeing the Malzahar, the Ash, the Jarvan. Definitely a lot of ways to lock down Temple City. Mm -hmm. We do have a spectator delayed a countdown through though, so with both teams fully locked in and with the rift just a few minutes away, we're going to put on a bit of music and wait it out. We'll be right back for you folks, don't go anywhere. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the High School Star League League of Legends Spring Playoffs. It's the winner's bracket 
finals, and it's Temple City versus Hazen High School. It's game number one here. I'm Crusader Kitten with Octavian, bringing you the action for this best of three. And looks like teams are just gonna be setting up here, and not gonna be seeing too much here. <laughs> I haven't seen, I haven't seen the dance animation on that skin yet. That's um, Project Ash, I'm assuming, at the very least. That is an Ash, and it's a, it's sort of a technologically themed skin. I don't really think of it. There's any others that have come out in that wheelhouse quite yet. She gets to do a disco dance. That's so cool. All right. Well, I'm super great, excited. Great, great start to the game, Octavian. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like a five-year-old child. I'm just it, easily distracted by everything. It's interesting to see Captain Nuke taking the uh, the flash here. That's usually not the uh, the oh. summoner spell of choice here. I think specifically against Jarvan, it does make some sense. It allows him to get outside of his cataclysm in the event of a gank coming from only secrets or something like that. You know, because that's the only CC that would actually be able to trap an Olaf even while he's ulting. Mm, that's very very true here and. Lots of CC as we were talking about in Champion Select here. I mean, the pickoff potential from the Ash and the Malzar just... The lockdown is so strong. Yeah, they've certainly got zone control in a fight. I, I, would, I could say that about both sides, you know? Both of these sides have these compositions that are really, really brawly. And that, that excites me as a, uh, as a caster. Because they, we're probably going to see a lot of brawls. And I love that. Action is good. I want Bloodsport. Ooh, almost yeah, a beautiful RG. binding. Bit of trading down in that bottom lane, as you pointed out here, and you have to keep an eye on that one here. Buttshot and Sketch, new to the Temple City roster, as uh, compared to the Alaskan roster. And yeah, look at those Cosmic Bindings. Level 2 hit for the Hazen High School bottom lane, and they are definitely using it to their advantage. I appreciate a well-played Bard, and IMK is certainly looking to make a case for himself in that regard. He has landed a great binding and shot a, shot a pretty good one earlier as well. Nearly got the binding on both members of the duo lane there. The Sweet Genius continues to zone Zud backwards. But Zud is doing his best to hold on to the minion wave as well. None of these lanes have so far broken one way or the other, but we're only three minutes into the match. Yep, so going to be a calm start here for both of these teams. These junglers going to have to be worried sad. I mean, Graves is a pretty, pretty early game oriented jungler. He, uh... Packs quite the punch when he gets into the out lane and just finished up his red buff here, so it looks like we may be seeing him coming around soon. Top lane Q1 suffering terribly in the eyes of Captain Nuke here. Captain Nuke uh -huh. 10 CS over him already in this game. Yeah, I mean there is a very large buffer of multiple minion waves coming under the turret here, but Jarvan can have a little bit of an issue farming under turret. His cooldowns are a little bit long, and so if he can't manage his damage correctly he could lose a good few minions there we'll see how it plays out after these minion waves have perished and it looks like the cs lead will actually stick oh but we have a gang in the, the middle lane gank coming in already it's gonna be is he motions with the first one flashing in and that's gonna be the first blood zud does pick it up for temple city nicely done given over to zud i said during champ select this guy's a menace on the well the explosive menace and uh giving him that first blood is certainly not going to harm him at all Teleport Ziggs as well, so he's looking for a lot more map pressure than even Ziggs is normally able to provide with his semi-global ulti. Yeah, we're going to see how uh, Temple City puts that to use. Definitely a team that we've seen use, like, you utilize the roaming a lot here. I remember just round of eight last year, Captain Nuke, when he was playing the Jarvan, was roaming all over the map here. But Ooh -hoo. So far, wow, Leah, look at those bindings once again. We're going to have to be very careful about this bottom lane here. I want to get a barred highlight reel and put IMK in it. This guy is, he's, we're only f nearly five minutes into the game and he's already hit two miraculous looking bindings. I have high hopes for the rest of the match if that's the sort of pattern he he's going to stick to. So with first blood picked up here for Zed, we're going to have to see what he does. And it was Z-Motions who got the first gank off as the Gragas, so... Gonna see only secrets if you can show up. He was over, sealing away the Gromp from Z Emotions, but Z Emotions did take advantage of that. So now top lane only secrets is actually jumping up here, and Ooh. the EQ combo gonna be coming through. Captain Nuke will be taking a lot of damage here, forced to flash away. And that'll be the end of that one. A really nice side step from Captain Nuke to start that one off, but there was just too, they were too close already. Only secrets didn't actually need the CC to prevent to present a threat because of how much damage him and Jarvan can provide in the early game. Graves, Jarvan, that's 
that's a that's a truckload of damage right there. So the flash was still burned from Captain Nuke, and I mean, teleport burned as well to get him back to the lane. So summoners off of Olaf, I would say, is worth the time of the uh, jungle gank. So, Temple City in this best of three versus Hayes in high school. Wonder if this does move on to the grand finals. Loser. It's thrown onto the losers bracket and I'd have to play University High School. University is actually a team that was possibly predicted to actually make it through to the finals, but uh, unfortunately had some scheduling issues, had to pull in some subs for their semifinal match, so didn't do qu quite well in that, but they should be up to full strength here. And this finals, I mean, it's looking to be pretty close here, but. Definitely hinge on this one match here. So see motions oh. down the bottom lane. Gonna be going right through a ward, but he may have them a little bit off guard. Snare will be landing here, and that's the damage butt shot picks it up. And Z motions with the level six. Able Z to pick one up, pick another up. Z motions had a great impact on the map so far. We're not even cresting the seven minute mark, and uh, he's made very much made two kills happen. The flash body slam in the mid lane was the catalyst for Sweet Genius going down, and now his presence forced um, IMK into a very hard decision. Run towards the Gragas or get hit by the snare from Jin. And uh, neither one of those would have worked out for him in the long run, so good presence on the map from Z-Motion so far. Yeah, Z-Motion's just not even going to be visiting this top lane here. Thinking, you know, just like Captain Nuke deal with things himself here and Captain Nuke is actually looking for a bit of a roam himself might have scared off only secrets here lots of mid lane grouping and we're gonna see what comes of it Zod gets caught off it's jumped oh. on Sweet Genius with the kill but the stun did come through and Q1 gonna go down to Captain Nuke with the Ragnarok he is going in on this back line Sweet Genius goes down there's a double kill now oh. it's a triple kill for Captain Nuke he finally gets taken down by IMK but Z Motions has shown up here as well stun coming through minions doing some damage here and IMK is actually doing a decent amount has to flash away from that barrel and he should be looking to back out of there. Oh man, hire that Olaf for your Clown Fiesta themed kids birthday party because that was freaking crazy right there. A triple kill to Captain Nuke is going to catapult him ahead of his opposite number. Ooh, IMK might be going down. Ooh, close one there, but Z Motions started with the explosive cast, so that barrel roll didn't do too much. Yeah, he 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 aimed for the combo, but didn't quite land it. Something you see a lot of fancy Gragas players do is drop their Q and then ult somebody towards it so that it pops them and there's a big burst of damage all at once. But Z-Motions didn't have the time to set that all up. I think uh, IMK would have sniffed that out. And so he had to just lead with the ulti and hope he had enough damage to finish it off and his hopes did not come to fruition. Sadly. Yep, so. We've seen 0-0 zero, zero and 4 here for Z-Motion, so... Has been involved in four out of the five kills, and actually only secrets going with the counter jungling again here. CC motions on this rep of looking to see this one away. It's a little scary with a um, three oh, one Olaf behind you, but all the secrets going for it. Didn't quite understand what was going on there at first. Captain Nuke is roaming down from the top lane now. No, it looks like it's going to fizzle out. That that could have been really scary for only secrets. I think he was hesitant to pull the trigger on that um, attempted steal because Captain Nuke is a powerhouse now and was pushed up far enough in the top lane that he could have comfortably left and come to help his jungler out. Sweet Genius could have shown up for the fight as well, but I really think the 3-in-1 Olaf is going to have more of an impact than the uh, half-baked 1-in-2 Mouse. And now look at this. Z Motion's Captain Nuke want to make some payback happen here. They're going on to the uh, top side of Hazen High School's jungle. Going to find though that only Secrets has already cleared it all out. And now let's head back up to this top lane here. Possibly get a gank on the Q1, but Iku combo should be fine. Yep. And sketch. Uh Finds IMK in a bush. IMK may have uh, been a hard to There two. is the curtain call as well, but he gets locked up. And now Sketch has to flash over this wall. Sweet Genius came in with a teleport. Immediately locks, locks down Buckshot. And gets the kill. <sighs> Every time you shout Sweet Genius, I think you're shouting Sweet Jesus. And you're just getting really into the cast. Oh, but man. no, it's just the guy's name. Nope. It was just him with the teleport down there. Right on top of the AD carry, but... 
is losing a bit of health on his tower now. Of course, tower is giving the uh, extra gold. And you take him down, and Captain Nuke's actually in trouble here. Q1's got him trapped. There's the flash to get out. Ooh, Dragon Strike wasn't quite on target there. And that's why you take the flash over the ghost. A ghosting Olaf there would have been a very dead Olaf. So I see I see the merit of taking that summoner spell in this specific, somewhat strange matchup. One of the critical things about the uh, mid lane turret and how much... Ooh, may have to get back to that in a second, though. Yep, gank onto bottom lane Z motions. Down in Kunorogia, and yep. <laughs> Zut with the kill swoops in there. <laughs> with the dunk. Yeah, the mid lane. Some comes through. Oh, man. However, Kunorogia did get that bottom lane tower, so that gives them the first tower, and they do get that bonus gold, which is quite nice. Mm -hmm. And now Zed's going to be able to execute it. It's low enough on health. Oh, Z Motions gets to flash over the wall, though. Up, oh, and only Sukas is making some chase here. But not quite able to finish it off. Yeah, they do get the flash out of the Gragas, though, so I suppose that's worth the effort of interrupting him doing the Gromp Camp, which was a little bit greedy from Z Motions in the first place. Um, Air Drake is available, and Gragas just had to go back to base. I'm surprised it wasn't a point of contention, but I suppose the, the Wind Drake, even with some of its recent buffs, still isn't a uh, huge factor for a lot of teams. Oh man, Zud, look at that CS lead. 20 CS over his opponent here. And he's going to be teleporting back into his lane to defend his tower where the three members of Hazen High School looking to get that push down, but I mean, it's a uh, it's a Ziggs. There's a decent amount of wave clear here to combat this and mm -hmm. Hazen High School looking to go mobile as they have all five members of their team on the top half of the map. Yeah, they've got a great anti-siege composition here. I mean, just slotting Ziggs into any composition makes it a good anti-siege comp. But even pulling Gragas out of the jungle, but Zod is in trouble. Hey, look at oh, no! The Zonius, though. Oh, the Cosmic Radiance. No, Zod may be able to survive here. He does get stunned up. And this may, may turn around. Critten Call going to be coming through, but two members were able to get out of its range. And, wow, that was almost disastrous there for Hazen High School, the tempered fate completely backfired. Oh man, that was something of a comedy of errors. We see the we see the tempered fate of course having some anti-synergy there with Crystalline Arrow as it flies straight through its target on off into the nether realm somewhere off to the side of Summoner's Rift. Presumably hitting a spectator and killing them, I don't know. And and then after that we hop into the curtain call and Buttshot doesn't manage to land all but the final shot. Well, Both sides sort of fizzling. It's a nice uh, passage to get out of that one. It's true. Yeah, it was a good magical journey from the yeah, side of it. Yeah, magical journey. So, Dragon does go down though, and it is taken by Temple City. First one of the game. It's the Cloud Drake. And Zud working with a bit of wave clear there is going to be preventing a push in the mid lane, even while he's not there. But uh, they did nerf the amount of damage that Zig's ulti does to minions, so it doesn't quite clear out the wave, and they may still get this turret. Or maybe not. It it all depends on whether they're willing to stay around for another wave and whether or not Zud makes it back in time. It seems like the first of those two factors is not going to be gracing us with its presence. Yep, so... Slowing down here. 3-1, to one, still the score for Captain Nick. Hasn't been able to pick up a kill since that one triple kill, but... Does have the black cleaver to show for Yotmus Ghost played the first item here for Q1. There's an interesting pickup here. He's going heavy damage. I think and this is a bit of an aside, but I think over the next few moments on the map, um, Hazen actually has something of an opportunity here because Captain Nuke and Zud are both missing their teleports, and Zud's ulti is down. So there's virtually nil in terms of cross map pressure like just sort of cheaty cross map pressure, instant mobility and stuff like that on uh, their side, whereas Sweet Genius is just about to have his teleport up, so there's going to be a small window of opportunity where they'll ha have the uh, global advantage. And then they may need it. Q1 is actually in a bit of trouble here, taking some damage. Captain Nuke goes in, locks him inside of the catacombs, <laughs> but Z motions with the long throw there. Right uh, on target that one was, and Captain Nuke able to survive even with the collateral damage coming through. Oh no, here's the Bard ulti though. Yep, Tempered Fate gonna be coming through. Doesn't do quite much there though. Captain Nuke able to return to base safely and in very low health though, and here's the Siege coming out from Temple City. 
gonna be doing some damage here and they pick up that tower so now two towers on their side and they only had three members up there as well so he's in high school not quite responding to this well yeah and they're even even when they're the ones behind on cooldowns they're still the ones ahead on tempo and they're the ones calling the plays across the map and they group towards the top side, get another outer turret down. I imagine we may see some focus on the bottom side now, or maybe it'll just become a farm lane for butt shot, as that is the uh, last remaining lane with an outer turret standing. As uh, we do return to a bit of quiet on Summoner's Rift, but with a slight advantage over to the side of Temple City. And definitely looking good here, as we were saying before, they did fall to the Hazen High School team um, this past to winter championship, so we're going to be looking for that revenge here, and Actually, he's butt shot and a lot of trouble. Enchanted Crystal to the face. You're not going anywhere, but damage is coming through. IMK is forced to secure that kill because butt shot is dealing a bit to Akuna Rogia. Yeah, surprisingly enough, Akuna Rogia did have to burn the heal there, but I, I, I guess it was answered back by butt shot. It's still a little worrying when in a 2v1, your AD carry has to pop a summoner to be able to survive, but it's still a kill, you know? Worrying or not, Ooh. it's still 300 gold. Damage in this middle lane here, Sweet Genius forced to back away. Four members of Temple City, the four that are alive, are all converging in onto this lane, and even with their AD carry down, they're trying to put pressure on this map. Yeah, Z Motions is going hugely aggressive here for some deep vision. And Temple City is just posturing like they own this map already. They've got that two, maybe 3k gold lead. I, actually, it's shortened to only two now, but they're acting like they've got a 5 or 6k. It may come back to bite them, or maybe the, those aggressive steps are going to realize their dream. Dress for the gold value you think you want. <laughs> it doesn't quite translate as well into League of Legends as it does in uh, the company workplace, does it? Mm, not quite. Not quite, Octavian. These kids, uh, you know, they have a few years until they're in that place. <laughs> These kids, please, Crusader. These kids. Please, like yeah. high schoolers, man. High schoolers. Didn't you just graduate, <laughs> <laughs> Crusader? Please, dude. High schoolers are just so immature. Akunarogia, though, in a lot of trouble. Captain Nukes charging down, but not gonna Ooh. be looking for. Ooh, snare. Nice snipe from Buttshot. It's the little things you got to appreciate yeah. them. And now we're seeing four members down on the bottom half of this map. Zed teleported up, Captain Nukes teleported up. Actually, all the teleports in this game are up here, so I'll be, we'll be seeing these guys breaking out a few of those here as a little pressure here. Dragon's about to respawn in a minute, and it's going to be the uh, Ocean Drake. Um, that is the Zigzulti topside to prevent Q1 from getting an outer turret. That does mean that it's down for any eventual fight that may break out on the bottom side of the map here, but that's probably all right. Ooh, the flash body slam doesn't connect. Ooh. Ooh, big moves by Z-Motions, but none of them quite landing here as the explosive cast just sends him further away. But there's still pressure on this bottom side. Curtain call gonna be busted out here, and Captain Nuke looked like he wanted to go in, but they're just gonna be canceling that engage. Actually, it was the uh, Tempered Fate that canceled the curtain call there. That's a lot of power burned. Gragas, Ziggs, Jin, all these alts are down. Meanwhile, Q1 does get the turn on the top side. There's not another super mega inferno bomb to stop him, or however many adjectives there are before that word bomb. And slowly we're seeing Hazen Still pull up. back into this match. Still look at the poke down on the bottom half of this map here. Temple City just going to be keep going in here and backing away as the teleport from Q1 does come through. If Hazen can get a chance to base and come back and then pick a fight with a few health bars replenished, I think they'd be in really good shape. They basically yeah. only traded Tempered Fate for like three impactful zoning ultis. But Zed down in this bottom lane, it's going to be hard to uh, try to get away from this. Mm -hmm. We're taking a lot of poke here and actually middle lane. Sweet Genius is still looking for this push in the mid. Captain Nuke does come to contest it though. Yeah, maybe the plan isn't to try and take the fight, even if it could technically be advantageous, but just instead to shove the other lanes while they've got the time. I mean, if they're so dedicated to living in that bottom lane, then make them pay for it in the mid and top. It makes a lot of sense with such hard pushers as a Jarvan and a Malzahar in the solo lanes. Yep, so it looks like both of these teams are just going to be regrouping. This dragon probably will be contested soon here, as both of these teams are kind of going back, picking up some <laughs> items. 
We do have the uh, Rune and Hurricane picked up on the stash, of course. Popular item for the Ash nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just really beautifully synergizes with um, with that Ranger's focus. So very much damage output coming from basically a single item pickup. Downside is that your laning phase may not be as powerful, but she makes up for that with a lot of utility. And so here's going to be the... Uh Bit of a vision battle over this dragon here, but actually these two members of he's in high school there are not on the side of the map where the dragon is, they're on the other side of the map. And Temple City are all grouped up here and they may just start this one off. That's yeah, an Ocean Drake too, one of the more impactful ones, though it's become less valuable recently as the other ones have sort of grown in value around it. But certainly strong for a team with a Ziggs and a Jin on it. And when we do see it being started up here, Mega Inferno Bomb to that middle lane to try to stop this push. Akinarogia does pick up that tower. They did trade it for a dragon and oh. possibly an engage. A nice cosmic binding though to stop it, but Karmi Shield's coming through. Flash away from the ca explosive cask. Mm -hmm. Oh, but there's a the separate fade. Dude, fate gonna catch on to one chain of crystal arrow onto Zut, so this is gonna be the engage here, and Z-Motions gets caught up, the Cataclysm does come down, two members of Temple City already down, it's a double kill coming in, and Sweet Genius continues to move in, triple kill for him as they chase down Buttshot, Buttshot trying to do what he can, but he is just eating up all the damage here, flashing from Only Secrets, he picks up that ace. Where has Hazen been hiding this team fighting? Wherever it was, they pulled it out, and they pulled it out in style. A two men, two men down for an ace there, and that was what I was talking about earlier, when I thought a team fight would break out on the bottom side, where they had the cooldown advantage. This time, they recognize it again, and without any outer turrets to push, without any split pushing to be done, they simply take the team fight after some uh, big cooldowns are burned, after Z-Motions doesn't have the ult anymore, after butt shot is a little bit out of position, and... It works out really well for them. They get a secondary turret in the mid lane. All the outer turrets have fallen, and Hazen are in the driver's seat now. Yeah, I mean, they just completely locked, locked down Z Motions. It was the uh, another grasp and the Cataclysm right on top of him. And that netted two quick kills for Sweet Genius, and they just kept going with that one there. So, 5, 2, and 3 now the score for Sweet Genius. He's going to be looking scary on this Malzahar. Lots of damage coming out from that champion. Mm hmm. And one of the things about that fight, we saw it with Z-Motion's usage of his ulti to only pull the Ash's Flash. Now, it's generally a good thing if you're just looking for the raw cooldown trade, but there is so much more damage than just the Ash on the opposing team here. I really feel like Z-Motion's has a bit too much focus on Akuna Rogia. That's not to say it's a bad thing to focus the enemy AD carry. That is... That's pretty standard stuff, but when the enemy has an AD carry coming out of the bottom lane and the jungle, and even arguably the top with a full AD Jarvan, mm -hmm. it's hard Hold to up. pick which one. Q1 on the run here. Ha Ooh, another grasp blow onto Sketchy, and he will be taken down by Sweet Genius. Meanwhile, we do see Zud picking up a kill. Sweet Genius now getting hunted down here by the front line of Temple City, and a messy fight here, but it may just end with this curtain call. Shouldn't be doing too much here. Captain Nuke still, though, on that front side. Two for two trade. Dang, Q1 is not very tanky at this point. As I mentioned earlier, that full damage no, Jarvan build. He's building the damage here, and that does leave a void in tanky frontliners for, uh, for Hazen High School. Mm hmm. And that's how I more anticipated these team fights to go with Temple City, because they've got the more standard composition of frontline, backline, tanks, damage dealers. Whereas Hazen has just really brawly intentions, it looks like. They're going into these fights looking to burst down important people and win the game off the back of one, or win the team fight, I should say, off the back of one or two really important kills that happen really fast. That simply didn't happen at the start of that fight. Z Motions didn't go down quickly enough. Captain Nuke didn't go down quickly enough. They weren't able to burst somebody down and turn it into a 4v5. Yeah. Scores 11 to 11 here, but Hazen High School do have that gold lead. They have two towers in the lead now, which is pretty significant here. Temple City haven't quite been able to pick up the towers. They do have the two dragons under their belt, though. But we're going to have to be seeing how this goes. I mean, the heavy burst damage. Q1 just keeps going for this damage build here. BF Sword picked up. Oh, man. I mean, they're just going to be looking for this burst here. Sweet Genius. Q1. Only Secrets. They have a lot... 
reverse damage should try to mm -hmm. take some down. I mean, they, we saw in the last fight, Z-Motions went down so quick. Yeah, it's certainly possible for them to win a fight, but they have to pick the right one. I think these teams, even if we do see a little bit of a gold discrepancy in favor of, um, pardon me, Hazen right now, I think we're at a point in the game right now where it's really, really very even, and the next yeah. team fight is going to break the game one way or the other. So I'm really excited, honestly, for the next brawl yeah. that breaks out. Randu and Zoan picked up by Captain Nuke and Z Motions here. Yeah, that's going to be a huge deal, actually. There's a ton of physical damage. It's basically only Malzahar doing any sort of sizable magic damage yeah. on the other side. Z Motions just stack the army here. So yeah, two two pairs of Ninja Tabby as well in the front liners. They're they're going pure armor right now. A hex drinker for Captain Nuke, and that's the only nod towards magic damage that he's given in his build. It's a powerful mm -hmm. nod, to be sure. Wow, Duskblade picked up here for Q1. Mm. He's just going for that assassin driver and hasn't even picked up the second tier boots yet. Yeah, I mean He's all in on killing Buttshot or killing Zud or something like that. And it's not a bad strategy um, when your opponents are immobile, semi-immobile, like a, like a Ziggs or a Jin. Jin, yeah. There's, just, there's a lot of peel on the other side, and um, there's not a lot of peel for the Ash, and there's not a lot of peel for the Malzahar. And that, I think, was the weakness that was kind of exposed in the last team fight we saw. But the team fight before that, that weakness wasn't exposed because Zud and Buttshot died very quickly. So it's really a matter of whose carries die first. Your dragon gonna be spawning once again. It's another ocean drake. But we are gonna be seeing Hayes in high school maybe making a play for this one actually here as they are on this bottom side of the map, putting down the vision here. So they may look to pick up their first drake of this game Ooh. here. And oh, there's a catch onto Sketch once again, gets a little bit too close to Sweet Genius. But gonna be able to survive tempered fate getting used there as well, a little bit too early, I'd say. Mega Inferno Bob and Critter Call gonna be coming through. Dragon though will be taken by Hazen High School, but here's the engage onto that backline of Kuno Roki are gonna get bursted down here, but still alive somehow. And Zed got destroyed by Q1 in the back line. There is Captain Nuke finding only secrets. And now it's a three versus three once again, and another two for two engage here. I mean I said Oh, Akuna Rogia survived that burst. I said earlier that the next team fight might very well break the game in one direction or another, but I didn't count on it being quite that even. The Bard ulti was a little bit of a miscommunication. It seemed like IMK wanted to keep going with the earlier aggression, the catch on the sketch, but he had gotten out of there. It was a favorable trade. They burned almost all of Sketch's hit points away, got him to burn the flash, and pretty much every tool that he had in his kit to get out of there. But then to continue to go was a little bit over-aggressive. I am K. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate an aggressive bard support. But that's what made that fight look so very messy. There were a lot of tools missing from both sides. Yeah, and the fight got split as well. I mean, Q1 was on that backline. He was able to take down Z Zud, though, before going down. And that's the burst from the drive-in coming into play here. Mm-hmm. Honestly, yeah, if Q1 can just trade one for one with one of the opposing carries, that's, that's his job basically done yeah, at this he point. He puts up the Cataclysm, and that's just... the uh, He's able to split up the team fight that way. Yeah, he doesn't really need to accomplish much more than that in a fight. Anything past killing Buttshot or Zud is just kind of gravy for him. <laughs> so that was that was a really, yeah. again, even fight. Yep, and first dragon here for Q1. I mean, for, uh, well, Q1 and the rest of Hazen High School. So, Captain Nuke now on the bottom half of this map. He's looking to push it up himself, but Sweet Genius is around, and... I mean, this game, it's... We're still tied on the kills here, 30 minutes in. Yeah, and almost tied on the gold as well, and I'd say certainly tied for potential to win the game, if that's a measurable thing. It kind of is. Subjectively. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely looking like it's going to be uh, one of the closer matches here. Dang, Zud has gone for a really high damage build. Um, he's going with the Rabadon's death cap as opposed to his opposite number, who's built a little bit more conservatively. Though, to be fair, we haven't seen the third item choice from Sweet Genius yet, because Zud is just a little bit ahead, it seems, in terms of itemization. Um, but that's a Void Staff completed now for Sweet Genius, who is just getting back to buy his third pickup. And, uh, yeah, it makes sense. Sweet Genius... 
has more tank killing tools in his kit, has the Void Staff, because there are tanks to kill on the enemy team, whereas Zud isn't really dealing with a whole lot of magic resist, and so is free to build just a stack, stacked pile of AP for himself. Yeah, for sure. I mean, as you keep saying, he's in high school and definitely putting a lot more uh, gold into the damage for these guys here, so... We do see Boots of Swiftness coming off for Q1, so he just wants to get to that back line, burst someone down, and now we're seeing focus on the top half of this map. Baron is up, it's 30 minutes in, definitely one of those objectives both of these teams are going to be looking out for, and we do have Hazen High School taking the initiative by pushing up on this top lane. Yeah, swiftly moving towards the top side. A little worried that Okunarogi is kind of separated from the team here. Mm, Alright, it looks like he's going to get back. Down already. Yeah, that was that was a hairy situation for kind of rogue, yeah. He was this, oh, go right ahead. It's gonna be on this one minute cooldown on the Mega Inferno Bomb. Captain Nuke pushing this bottom lane and dude Baron gonna get started up here. There is a teleport available for Captain Nuke, so he can rejoin the fight if necessary, but there is so much damage coming down to the right now, right into the pit here, but no one is gonna be there to take the ban, but Q1 may be in trouble flashing over. He wants to get onto that back line. Temper Fate lands onto all of them. Captain Nuke is all alone in the front line. And now here comes the rest of Hazen High School trying to join in on this fight. But shot gets taken down, but he is able to trade a kill back to Kunarogia. And now with the Baron buff. Hazen High School will take down three members of Temple City. Nicely done by Hazen. A little bit hasty towards the end of that fight. A Kunarogia rushing towards to try and finish off a few kills. Thinking he had them in his back pocket. Doesn't quite respect Buttshot's uh, burst damage with that uh, Duskblade Yumu's Jin build. But that's alright. It's sort of an afterthought. The fight had already been won at that point. A Kunarogia going down is obviously not great, but it's not going to cost them all that much. As, as you said, they still have three Baron buffs running, and of course all the gold from the Baron. I'd say this is the first time of the match that one of these teams has definitively claimed a lead for themselves. This Baron's going to open up a lot of possibilities across the map, especially with Dragon spawning. In just about a minute, they can oh get God. some really good pressure. another Ocean Drake? Is it? Yeah. Oh it man, stop it is. Here. <laughs> There's no Infernal Drakes this game. But the Baron buff here, I mean, this is going to be pretty big for Hayes in high school. We've been seeing them taking these towers constantly here. They still have the tower lead on their side. And, I mean, I mean that fight we saw, I mean, we saw the game plan from Q, the game plan from Q1. He just immediately went for that back line. <laughs> yep, indeed. I oh. mean, he actually didn't get any kills this time, but the tempered fate from IMK was pretty huge. Yeah, I mean, even if he didn't directly land the killing blow, he did quite a bit of damage. He burned resources off of uh, Zud. He burned resources off of Buttshot. He took up their time. He did yeah. his job. He may be 1, 5, and 11, but that 11 matters. <laughs> most assists are tied for most assists, really, with IMK. So, second Ocean Drake here for uh, Hazen High School, and that should be the end of Ocean Drakes, and end of, actually, any of the Elemental Drakes now, because... All the dragon will be the next spawn here, but we'll see if we actually get to that Ooh. point. Ooh, there is going to be the Q assess onto the Enchanted Crystal and Akuna Rogi actually gets caught in there, and IMK gets flung to the back line. Temper Fate going to be coming through, but doesn't quite go down because IMK did, did go down, and Z Motion still looking for the engage here. We've been seeing these snares land yet again here, and wow, that was. A quick two members picked off here. That was the combo that I was worried for Akunarogia about on the top side when the Zig Zulti came through. He does have the Rylai, so it slowed him down and made him an easy target for a captive audience off of Buttshot. Uh, and it, in the end, worked out to be just super long range engage, and it looks like they're catching on a Sweet Genius again. Yeah, Buttshot. I mean, you land the snares, and they're going to be able to put a lot of damage down onto him with the... Uh... Karma, Olaf, Grax, I mean, everyone on the team, actually. Oh, yeah. Mostly the Ziggs. Yeah, it's just Akunarugia not respecting the massive long-range engage potential out of a Jin and out of a Ziggs, especially with Ziggs running the Rylines. I mean, that's a synergy that I'd never really anticipated, but he's able to slow um, the AD carry down almost guaranteed. It's so easy to land that huge of an AoE. And then while they're slowed... Buttshot, we've already seen, has been on point with these snipes. It just makes his job easier. I really like that. It's, it's clever 
um, sort of interaction between these two champs in, in addition to that item, Rylaz. Yeah, I mean, the deadly flourishes are just going to be very, very scary. I mean, they just allow for so much damage to be coming off. There's so much poke on the side of Temple City, and I have to see Hazen High School, what they can do to combat it. Their Baron buff but actually just completely gone now. And didn't quite get too much off of that. Mm -hmm. I think one of the better tools for Akunarugia to contest it would be a Quicksilver Sash, which we've already seen Buttshot, with a lot of respect for Crystalline Arrow, has built one himself. Um, Akunarugia kind of waylaid it for a little bit in favor of getting a bit more damage, and had he had one in that fight, it may have played out drastically differently, as he could have gotten out of the Deadly Flourish. It looks like he's pathing in one now, though, with um, the Negatron Cloak in his inventory. Yep, so he's in high school, still with the slight lead, but still pretty much all up in the air here as Temple City have been making a very good case for staying in this game. And we'll be seeing where he's in high school decides to put their focus next. We are seeing Temple City starting to play on the back foot a little bit more here as he's in high school are putting a lot of pressure on pretty much all the lanes right now. Yeah, I think the Baron buff just about timed out, but some of that is a remnant of them having the Baron for a little while. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, they've just been pushing their vision further and further up. They're on another mission to clean out a few more pink wards and possibly some regular wards here as well as they're looking to gain control of the top side of the map. And yeah, they're heading up there. Q1 does have his teleport up as do Zed and Captain Nuke. This tower is going to be taking some damage. The Ashton Graves can do quite a bit of damage to the towers here and we're going to be seeing it going down, but Captain Nuke trying to get onto that back line onto Kunarogia. The current call will be coming in here as well, but does get cancelled out because Tempered Fate wanted to come in. Sweet Genius, though, does get taken down. Q1 onto the back line, trapping in a few, doing a lot of damage here. It's a Kunarogia and only secret. And IMK found one kill, flashing forward, gets the stun onto Zed, throws down the exhaust. Zanya's Hourglass is going to be coming in. Three members of Temple City already down here, but Zed does have enough health to survive through it so nice team fight coming out here some really aggressive moves from captain nuke to start that team fight off he ragnaroked his way to the back line to get onto akunarogia but simply didn't quite have the staying power he needed or the amount of health he needed to tank his way through basically the entire enemy team and kill the ash at the same time and after that akunarogia was basically given free reign throughout the rest of the fight and did quite a bit of damage as one will do on a four item yeah. ash a little and every time, and, oh, and every time Buttshot start, starts up the curtain call, the Tempered Fate comes out from IMK, and Buttshot has to cancel it real quick. Yeah, it's it's quite a dang solid counter. <laughs> yeah, and Which is, the Cataclysm in that last fight was huge, because Cataclysm comes down, they're trapped in it even though Q1 goes down, Ukinorogi, and only secrets are on the outside, and as you're saying, I mean, the, the multi-target damage from Ash is... Mm -hmm doing a number on and, Temple City here. And a portion of it was just that Captain Newt didn't have a dive buddy, he didn't mm -hmm. have Z-motions along with him, or even mm -hmm. just some damage output from Zud, or yeah. even you just Always use the buddy system. Yeah. So, Ash got really low, Ash had to burn Flash and heal, but it doesn't matter. Close only counts in hand shoes and horse grenades, as the saying goes. And so, Akonarogia, he got close to death, but that isn't quite enough, and he's still able to shoot quite a lot of arrows, even with a few hundred hit points remaining. Elder Drake going to be spawning in 30 seconds here. Baron is up, so going to be seeing how these teams play around the objectives or even if they play around them at all here. But we'll probably be seeing the Elder Drake attempted by one of these or the Baron. Q1 is pushing down in this bottom lane here and looks like the rest of Hazen High School going to be joining him. Yep, and this dragon is the big daddy king of them all. So this is going to be a lot more important than the last few that we've seen go down, especially with the number of dragons taken this game. Wow, I'm ready for this double Ocean Drake buff. <laughs> oh man. They're going to have so much regen, they won't know what to do with it. The dragon is looking for a little bit though, he's getting burned really quickly. Oh, Tempered Fate coming in a little bit early, and Curtain Call will be able to rain down here, but they were able to secure that sketch, getting caught up. However, Captain Nuke wants to go into Kunarogia, has no escape this time, and Captain Nuke is on the back line, but he is still looking for targets. Meanwhile, Q1 was getting in there. Finally, Z-Motions takes him down. Captain Nuke has his Guardian's Angel popped. Only Secret's still looking to go, and Captain Nuke coming back up, but he does get put right back down by Sweet Genius. And that was a 2 for 3 in favor of Hazen. 
Yeah, and that's the multi-carry composition doing work. This time they did manage to shut down Akuna Rokia, but Sweet Genius was left out of the picture, and uh, he accomplished quite a bit that fight. They've got a lot of consistent damage sources. It's very difficult for them to pick a fight where they instantly cripple the opposing team. That was very close to being the Captain Nuke show, as far yeah. as the team fight is concerned, but I mean, he it's... didn't quite have enough in the tank. Oh, it's the emotions finding Sweet Genius off inside of his jungle here, and now they have Zud here to help themselves out, so should be able to get the shutdown kill here. Oh, yep, Mega Inferno Bomb right on the edge there. Zud is able to pick it up. A little bit of an overextension from Sweet Genius. Yeah. It's it's probably That's going to be alright. <laughs> I mean, the death times are pretty long. He's at 45 seconds plus right now. Yeah, so this other dragon buff may not see too much come out of it. It's only an only secret to IMK now. Yeah, that's true. The um, it being off the map is good for them though. But the the Baron is very much available right now, and Sweet Genius is still not around for another 24, 25 seconds City or so. Can set it up instant teleport from Captain Nuke here. They want to take this one down fast. Emperor Fate did come down, but didn't quite land on the Baron here, so it didn't really do too much to its effect, but it still has quite a bit of health left, and now Hayes and High School are going to be closing in. Baron's getting low. It's going to be secured, though, by Temple City, so Hayes and weren't quite able to get in there to try to steal that one away. Yeah, a much less exciting fight than the one we had around the Elder Drake leads to Temple City grabbing the Baron buff, and you could say that that was sort of an effect of Sweet Genius going over overextended into the opposing general goal just maybe a minute or so ago and death timers are getting long enough that that's the sort of ripple effect that it can have even just a solo death on the opposing side oh man so Baron buff here on temple city gonna help them really combat against this push here captain nuke gonna see q1 inside the jungle and he's gonna doesn't wanna go down like sweet genius did <laughs> Oh. So, uh, Temple City can have the advantage here. I mean, they'll be able to push very easily. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised we're seeing them actually group towards the mid side with oh, wow. Baron buffs all around. They okay. could go for some sort of sideways push. Z motions with the ZZ route. Where is he going to put it? That's true. Yeah, they could even send Gragas to a sideways just to drop down the portal and come back. They've got pressure just waiting to happen, but they're not taking advantage of it. They're yeah, here in the mid lane. They've done that before. They actually grouped up into this middle lane here. He's going to plop it down right in the middle of middle lane and... They're all in. Get the assist. Yep. The Silent are pushing in here as well, so... Going to be trying to take this one down. Silent to Captain Nuke and he'll eat some damage because of it. Didn't want to quite burn the Ragnarok there. Fashion, Sweet Genius gets thrown into that back line and he has no protection there. And now the curtain call going to be coming in. Tempered Fate though will be stopping the bullets remaining through. However, Mega Inferno Bomb does come through his emotions. Trying to come in here once again, Sweet Genius is down, so this is not looking good for Hazen High School as their inhibited tower falls and Temple City quickly just burst down these structures. Yeah, that's an inhibitor down. And the strategy paying off for Temple City who sort of brute forced their way up the mid lane and get themselves some rewards for it. Stealing away a blue buff as well, why not? Yeah, and now they're going to be backing away, farming up all those side lanes. And they got quite a bit of gold there, so definitely a much better Baron play than uh, Hazen had earlier in this game. And nearing 44 minutes, we do see Temple City closing up this lead. Yeah, it's going to be difficult for Hazen to hold out now against the free pressure in the mid lane. And another just aggressive five-man push on one of the side waves. Which it looks like they may be grouping towards the top side for that, though. It's a little too early to tell. Once we get some members of Temple City past the river, then we may know what their game plan is. Yeah, we're seeing some six item builds being finished up here. The mid laners, Captain Nuke. Q1 is uh, close to it. And actually, wow, it's only Secret has quite a bit of farm on him, and he has the uh, full build. Interesting. Okunarogia went with the Guardian Angel instead of the Quicksilver that I thought he'd be going for with the amount of snaring that Buttshot's been doing. Uh, Quicksilver's going to certainly serve a similar purpose, though. I think either one is 
is a legitimate option in this case. Quicksilver is going to be more useful against Captain Nuke, who the threat of the Olaf isn't about just cleansing off a single CC or something because you can spam out Undertoes. The threat of the Olaf is about the Olaf killing you. So if you can just prevent that one time, it may be enough. All right, now Temple City pushing up into the top lane here. And still have the Baron buff active. Captain Nuke taking some damage here once again, and actually once again the engage, but Z motions this time gets locked up under the tower. He's gonna go down. Q1 meanwhile was in that back line, and he did a lot of damage. So not only Secret's gonna be starting to help clean up some of these kills here, but he may just fall himself getting stand up. Captain Nuke with the Ragnarok gonna be jumping in, flashing in front. And the Guardian's Angels will get popped simultaneously. They'll be coming back up. Kunirogi does go down. Captain Nuke may be soon to follow. There it is. Sweet Genius with it. Double stun coming in. But no, the bouncing ball from Zod. Nets him another kill. And that's going to be wait. Triple kill from Sweet Genius. <laughs> and that's the Ace from Hazen. Oh, you got to be careful of the... Malzahar bouncing damage. Oh my god. Uh, and Zud does go down in the end as it's the like disease it's plays its course. <laughs> IMK left all alone to fend off two super minion waves. Happened. Malzahar is a master of accomplishing things while he's dead. This is very true. Triple <laughs> for him here. I mean, what's he even going to do with all this gold? He's at. His full item build, and actually, he did just buy something, so. Could I mean, that's on his hourglass, it's just mm -hmm. huge for him now. The last time he got taken down was that big engage. And yeah, actually, this time Z Motions, he went for the engage once again, but instead got locked up with another grasp under the tower, and that was the big frontline tank for a Temple City down. Yeah, Z Motions got kind of instantly melted in that fight, and that did swing it pretty heavily in the favor of uh, Hazen to start off. But I, I would say that Temple City actually played it quite well. They kited back, they dealt as much as they could while their other secondary tank was still wreaking havoc. Um, but I, I have to say, in that specific fight, IMK was such an MVP. The guy landed a three man tempered fate. Didn't quite catch butt shot in it, unlike usual, where he catches only butt shot and nobody else. But still, a three-man tempered fate to keep butt shot alone, basically with QQQ at the beginning of the fight. And then at the end, he landed a beautiful double binding, the kind which his laning phase hinted he was capable of executing. Yeah, I mean, it's just once again Q1, along with the tempered fate, doing a really good job of just splitting up the fight and allowing. He's in high school to just focus down targets one by one. But they are still on the back foot here. They've got the inhibitor still down in the mid lane. Looks like there's a large wave grouping in topside thanks to a ZZ Rod portal. And uh, Baron will be back on the rift in just under 20 seconds. So they've got a few pressing questions to answer, and I don't know how they're going to do it. Yep, the next Elder Drake going to be spawning in a minute here as well. So. Right. The inhibitor has just respawned, which yeah. is going to give them a breath of fresh air here. Captain Nuke is down on the bot side, and Hazen High School have to make a quick decision here. Captain Nuke does have teleport if they want to contest this Baron buff. And aren't a lot of damage coming down. Kunikar will be coming in. IMK taking quite a bit of it. Q1, though, going over the wall, getting into wow. the but gets completely destroyed as he jumps in. And this means Hazen High School have to make a run for it. And this should be the Baron for Temple City. And that may be the final nail in the coffin. This Baron is going to be shredded almost instantly. The inhibitor in the mid lane is laying wide open. Q1 will not be a factor for almost a minute now. Man, Q1, I mean, he went for his normal play, diving into that back line, but he just got completely deleted there. He was anticipated very heavily this time. <laughs> they knew it. They it's knew that was coming. And uh, yeah, they're going to get quite a bit off the back of that. The Baron is no small thing, and it's going to help them push in onto this inhibitor turret here as well. They could rot rotate around to the mid lane for some easy prey, but they want to go for the harder shell of the still standing inhibitor turret. Yep, and Mega Inferno Bomb coming here once again. Lots of damage onto that back line. Sweet Genius and Only Secrets forced to back away. Tempered Fate not doing much there, and that's the top lane inhibitor going down Temple City now. 
Let's see what the next move is. Q1 is about to spawn, but they have enough time to just completely burst down that inhibitor and make their way out. Other dragon spawned. And they are seeing a little bit of pings onto it, but they may just head back to base. I really don't see a way back into this one for a Hazen unless there's some sort of elongated miracle. They're going to have to wait out two inhibitor respawns now. And I don't really think that they even have a chance of contesting this Elder Drake, which we're likely going to see Temple City rush right for. It would be desperation if they yeah, were to come out and this, attempt it. Uh, this triple bloodthirster comp doesn't really work against the double Randuin's Omen, Omen Thornmail. At the front line of uh, Temple City are sporting here. Uh. Other Drake gonna be contested here, but there's gonna be two waves of super minions pushing into Hazen's base in Temple City. Should just be comfortable with forcing Hazen High School to defend their base. This is smart. They're just shoving up the bottom lane. They're using that Baron buff to get pressure going in all three lanes because they get the free pressure in top and bottom. And then they have their their leisure of either pushing for the turret if the enemy team doesn't field enough to defend them, or going back and doing the Elder Dragon if they feel like they can't crack this last inhibitor. It really is at this point Temple City's game to lose. Yeah, 51 minutes in here in Temple City. Finally picking up this gold lead just slightly. Wow, Kunarogia Guardian's Angel gets popped. Critical Call gonna be coming in. Won't be able to finish him off though, because Tempered Fae did come through here once again, but that just means that this tower and the inhibitor are gonna be going down easily here. Temple City closing in on the end of this game. And the siege potential of Ziggs and Jin alongside two downed inhibitors and a Baron buff proves too much, I would say, for almost any composition to bear. As we now have all three inhibitors cracked open. And there's a crystalline arrow though. Getting a bit cut off though. He does get shut down Q1 into that backline butt shot. Taking a lot of damage here. And he is going to be able to kite himself away. See emotions. Meanwhile, Guardian's Angel gets popped in the middle of the Hazen High School team. He will get hunted down by only secrets. And they were able to find a one for two. But they still have so much pressure on them. Uh -huh. This is something of a Pyrrhic victory here. Yeah. They won that team fight, I suppose, if you look at the numbers of it, two for but one. they to lose the other dragon, too. Yeah, there's, there's so much that they're still losing all around them. That team fight was just a small part of the Symphony of Pain, which is currently being played for them. As the Elder Drake gets started off, three inhibitors down. It would be crazy for the enemy to come and try and contest this here, but I don't know. Maybe Hazen's got a streak of crazy. It's only down to half health here. They've been hitting this one for a while, but yeah, it looks like they aren't going to be trying to contest this one here. I mean, I mean, they lose more members, and it's just putting their base in a lot more danger, so. I'm Dragon going to be going over to Temple City. Yeah, fortunately, Zud and. Fortunately, I should say for Hazen, Zud and Z Motions hadn't respawned yet, so they will not get the benefit of the Elder Dragon if I am correct in my assumptions and it works the same as Baron. You know, maybe it doesn't. We can we can perform a little bit of science today as we swap over to Zud. Yeah, he does not have the buff. So you have to be alive when it goes down. It's not a sort of through death buff. I don't think that there's any buff that you get even while dead. Team-wide yeah. buffs. But it is it is nice to have that confirmed. Well, I guess, I guess when you get the normal dragons then... That's true, yeah, so yeah, that one... get those bonuses, but... That is a team-wide buff that you get well yeah, dead. Drake. As we now uh, break the 54-minute mark, coming in on that hour-long game for our first match of the night, ladies and gentlemen. We do have a best of three to bring you tonight between Hazen and Temple City. Hazen is on their last legs and about to breathe their last. Yeah, I mean, this is when they start thinking about this next game, what they have to change about it. I mean, the ban onto that Ziggs may be uh, maybe. in store, but, I mean, Sweet Genius didn't do too badly. I think a lot of their, uh, I mean, what they have to improve wasn't really the draft phase here. There's been a few compositional failings in some of these team fights where they just didn't have a tanky front line to do what you need a tanky front line to do in a late game team fight. So, I imagine the draft will change a little bit. Maybe we won't see a pure AD driving out of top. Maybe we won't see a Graves jungle. Either way, I think just replacing one of those with a tankier member might be the right call. Hmm, pardon me. But yeah, I think it's the right call indeed to look forward to the next game as this one is just about on the edge of falling apart. There is hope, Octavian. 
That's true. They're okay. respawning just to be kind of shredded, yeah, though. They're going to be taken down pretty quickly here. And there's a top one already down. Middle lane is about to spawn, and Akuna Rogi taking a lot of damage. The emotions trying to go in, but he's taking some himself. There is Ooh. Cubone getting it onto Buttshot here. No one there to help out Buttshot. And last year, oh my god, the damage double kill for Q1. He's able to live and he keeps going in now. Captain Nuke trying to teleport himself away, but the Guardian's <laughs> Angel does get popped. And this is going to be an ace onto Temple City by Hazen High School. And 70 second death time is what damage can Hazen do to the base? I said it would take a miracle for them to pull out a victory and it may be Christmas come in August for Hazen because that <laughs> is a clean ace. 60 plus second death timers, but we, we see a teleport coming in to answer it. If you look back at the base right now, oh, there are yeah, lots of minions. minions. Pushing oh, it onto those turrets. Canceled. One of them goes down. The teleport was canceled. They were teleporting onto the wrong turret. Oh, they may, be the bay. they may be able to end this one here as long as they can tank up these towers. There's 30 second death timers. They don't have a super powerful tank, though. This is a pure plenty ED German. No, Octane, they have plenty of time here. That's this true. They had that one hero caster minion. Look at that coming through in the end and picking up the win 56 minutes in. Oh, man. Almost hitting the hour, Hazen pulls the most drastic of turnarounds. Well, I mean, this is this is where the uh, the comp comes through. It's the heavy engage comp. You go right in, and you don't stop. You don't you don't back out. You just keep going. <sighs> I mean, that tempered fade from I and K at the end there was huge. It just allowed Q1 to completely burst down Buttshot because Zed was locked up in it. So was Sketch, I believe. Uh -huh. Everything. Back line. Everything in that last team fight was played beautifully from Hazen. It had to be. I mean, that was that was the only way that they won that game. If they played it perfectly in their last chance, the last team fight is a Cinderella story. All right, guys, that was just game number one of this best of three. We're going to be going to a quick break, then coming right back for game number two. It's Temple City High School versus Hazen High School, and Hazen just took the game one win. You guys are watching the High School Starlight brought to you by Twitch, New Egg. MSI, Tespa, Rockat, Jinx, and Loot Crate. We'll be right back after a quick break. Don't go anywhere.